Welcome back, everybody. For those with disabilities, a service dog means a more independent life, but oftentimes the attention the dog attracts in public can make life more difficult for both the dog and the owner. To share more and help us do better, we invited dog trainer Joey Iverson and one of her clients, Kaylin Parker, along with her service dog, Hank. Welcome to all three of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, Joey, tell us first of all the, the difference between a service dog, right. a therapy dog, which, and an emotional support dog. Sure. What's the deal? So a service dog actually performs specific tasks to mitigate the disabilities that an individual has. And they can vary tremendously about what exactly those uh, skills are. But they have specific skills that actually uh, mitigate disability behaviors. Okay, therapy a, dog, a therapy support dog. dog. Yeah, well, a therapy dog is trained to offer um, comfort in situations they visit hospitals, mm -hmm. they visit a variety of environments, and they are trained by their owner and go with their owner to offer people support and comfort. Uh, they do not have the same public access skills as a fully uh, trained service dog. And is the service dog the one that wears the vest? You know, a lot of dogs wear a vest. Therapy dogs generally wear a vest when they're going to the environment that they're going to be on duty. Uh, and most of the time they're required to wear that vest um, here in the Pacific Northwest and in a lot of places around the country. They're certified through Pet Partners, which is actually a local mm -hmm. uh, company here, and they have a green vest that the dogs wear when they're on duty. An emotional support dog uh, doesn't have specific skills just being themselves uh, that they offer emotional support to individuals that need that. They also don't have the same public access skills or public access um, to environments that are non-dog friendly. Okay. So People should not be just putting a vest on any that's dog right. and saying, come with me, that's yeah. not, that should not be a thing. It shouldn't be, no, because um, this is the manual. Look that, at that. <laughs> that's a thick one. That is a big, giant textbook. This is the skills that Kaylin and my other clients have invested in their dogs and themselves to get to the level of passing the certification that ADI uh, requires. Fantastic. Kaylin, what does Hank do for you? So he actually alerts to my um, rising panic. He responds to my panic attacks. He does blocking for me. Um, Wait, what does that mean, blocking? So like if somebody gets too close into my personal space, he'll mm -hmm. step between to give a little bit of a barrier between me and the other person that I may not know. Um, and he just generally responds to a lot of my disabilities. And yeah, so. he, he is there to help you. Yes. So if you and I are meeting in a crosswalk, um, what should I not do? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the general rule of thumb is uh, no eye contact, no talk, and no touch. Yeah. So you would talk to me, but you would essentially ignore him because they're seen as medical equipment. Right. Um, and I understand everybody loves dogs, but <laughs> right. and it can be difficult for some people, but it, you could be distracting them from doing their actual job. And for some people, yeah. that could cause serious issues. So that's the kindest thing I can do. Yeah. Um, now, I know people just ask questions, you know, not always thinking about this. What, what kinds of things do you encounter? <laughs> um, well, I've been and asked. And how can we do better, I guess, is what I'm trying to <laughs> Fair find enough. out. Um, so I've actually been uh, asked about my disability quite a bit. I've been told I don't look old enough to be disabled, and I don't look disabled enough to have a service dog. What do you even say to that? <laughs> Sometimes I just look at them and walk away, honestly, because yeah, I don't be really, better. I really don't know how to respond. Yeah. Um, some handlers are more than happy to educate you, and depending on the day, I would be happy to educate as well. But I think people in general just need to try to not be rude and intrusive. Yeah, with it's their not questions. an invitation to to hear your life story. Yes. Plus, I mean, that's kind of a burden to go around in life trying to explain things to everybody. That yeah. that's but, not really, especially when most people that end up with service dogs do it so they can live a normal life. Right. So then obviously if you constantly are trying to touch the dog, distract the dog, ask questions, say slightly rude things, it, you're not letting them live the life that they want to live. You're kind of inhibiting that. Yeah. I'm glad you're sharing that because it's that may not that's not intuitive, right? It's you see not. a dog, you want to pet it, yes. you 
you feel like you talk to other people who have dogs all the time, and so you know we just need a slightly yeah. different mindset on what we're well, seeing. One interesting one of my other clients, uh, Susanna, she has a uh, Labradoodle that's her service dog. Mm -hmm. It's a mobility dog. There, there's, there's, there's the dog. Yep, there's Bailey. Uh, Bailey is a mobility dog, and Susanna having locomotion challenges. Bailey facilitates her being able to walk well, but because she has neurological issues then people stopping to talk to her actually uh, impacts her ability to right. walk well. The stopping and starting is difficult for uh, her. The processing that is required for her to talk to someone uh, really tires her so that then when she goes back to trying to maybe walk home or wherever she's going next, it actually gets more difficult. So maybe it's the best thing just to not interact yeah. and, and let yeah. people go, go about their business and um, just not risk making an extra barrier for them? You know, I think that would be the best. Percentage-wise, you're probably better off just giving them space and maybe smile mm -hmm. um, and not pretend they don't exist. Right, yes, good you know, point. So there's that, that balance uh, that's there. But don't make a thing. Exactly. Just don't make a thing. Yep. In general. In general. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so you have some patches yeah. here, and we'll see those sometimes out in public. How, how, how should we learn about these? You, you know, the just thing that, tell us? that I think about, uh, you know, the reason that people this would go on a leash. Mm -hmm. In addition to patches, you can see the ones on the front. Yep. Um, certainly iconic that people would get. Uh, I love that the the don't touch, don't you know, stop, etc. That's that's letting me know if I saw working, keep back. That would help me yep. too, because I don't want to invade anybody's yeah. space, right? I don't think this most people do. This is one of my do. favorite. <sighs> Damn it, Jim! I'm a service dog, not a petting zoo. <laughs> It. Yeah. See, humor helps us with so many things. Um, and if somebody it asks a question yeah. uh, to you, can I touch the dog, and you say no, we need to understand that, right? Yes. Yes. And not take offense because there's a reason. It's, That's it's, right. And I love what you just said about medical equipment because I wouldn't yeah. go up to someone and insist upon talk, uh, touching their wheelchair or their, you or, know, or Can I take a spin or, in your wheelchair? Yeah, no. So, <laughs> So if we think about it in yes. that mode, because I don't think people mean to be no, they don't rude. It's just no. that dogs are such a magnet, and then yep. and then we just say things. So yeah. we can learn and do better. Thank you very much. Yes, thank Appreciate you. it, Hank. Well done <laughs> over there.